you six million spiritual, sensual, sexual awakened wonders of the world. We are on a journey together, questioning state power, questioning corporate power, growing, giving and learning how we can better move towards localised, loving, licentious, orgiastic communities. People often ask me, Russell, what is your take on the legalisation of marijuana? And though I'm broadly in favour of eradicating the sort of officious, state-driven finger-wagging and shame associated with consuming various mind-altering substances, I am sober myself. Through my experiences and my journey, I have come to realise humility in the face of powerful, consciousness-expanding substances is the way I choose to live my life. However, I also understand that not everyone has a pleasant life in the shallow, rapacious, capitalistic system that we live under, and many people use marijuana and other psychoactive substances as a form of escapism. So I just sort of think the parameters involving the question should marijuana be legalised are quite restrictive and limited in scope, because we shouldn't really be asking whether this substance many cultures deem sacred, should that substance be subsumed and commodified into the same system that is causing the abuse of said substance. You know, it takes a special... Oh, I think it's quite telling about Western society that we, we love plants, but we, we need to put them in these sort of organised, cylindrical boxes known as pots. We have to organise and rationalise nature, which is inherently chaotic. I think it takes a special kind of psychopath to look at these consciousness-altering substances that are held in the deepest spiritual esteem across cultures and think to themselves, oh, I might sell that and make a quick buck. Though I think decriminalising marijuana is certainly a step in the right direction, I would encourage you sexually awakened beings to critically question the question itself. Back when I was a touring comedian, one night I remember I had a gorgeous girl sort of fondle my bollocks while her equally gorgeous friend gave me a, a rectal examination with her tongue. Ikea is an interesting place, isn't it? It's a sort of ritual for many young Western couples to traverse the morass of what I can only assume is unethically gathered furniture. A lot of people think it's quite cute, don't they? Like the Allen key, it sort of has this comforting warmth to it, doesn't it? It certainly has a friendlier brand to say Shell or BP, but it's still an avaricious profit-driven monolith, isn't it? I'm sure the unscrupulous, albeit highly intelligent marketing team got together one day and sort of thought, how do we tap into that primordial, that visceral burst of serotonin humans feel when they provide, when they when they build and construct for their family, for their community? Well, what if we build most of it and they can put the final pass together with this little metal key? Call it the Allen key, that's a friendly name, that's cute, isn't it? Well, it's not cute, is it? It's an evil, greedy machine tapping into your visceral psychology to extract as many resources from you as possible. And what about the meatballs? I'm a vegan, I try not to judge other people's dietary preferences, but it's one thing to brutally slaughter innocent beings that we know feel pain, but then to sort of mesh their residual flesh into little balls so that human children think it's fun and playful. I think that's a bit much, isn't it? I know if I was going to be slaughtered, I'd much rather my flesh not be turned into little balls. Thank you for watching, you six million sexually awakened beings of the world. Come see me and Wim Hof live. We're breathing for five hours and then we're going to have an orgy. Where my thugs are, where my gangsters are, where my hoodlums are, then where the whores are, where my hooligans are, where my thuddies are, we want you in the crew, lad. Dog money killer, man. I'm looking for a crew.